The world scenario in technology is characterized by very fast changes and rapid and continuous introduction of new and emerging technologies. During the four decades since independence, India has witnessed a phenomenal expansion and diversification of industry. The country has to its credit many achievements in areas like nuclear power generation, offshore drilling, petrochemicals, satellite programs, application of remote sensing, laser technology, and so on. This breakthrough in the expansion and development of the industrial base has been made possible by the efforts of technical manpower at various levels, such as designers, researchers, engineers, technologists, supervisors, and craftsmen who were trained at various technical institutes of the country. Middle-level supervisory technical manpower trained in polytechnics have contributed significantly in the expansion and development of industries. As we adopt, adapt and introduce new and emerging technologies, this manpower will have to play a different but vital role. What new roles do we envisage in this changing phase? The whole um, engineering industry is, is going through a tremendous change. We, we have to be competitive. I think the Indian people are demanding far better products, services at, at uh, internationally competitive prices. And this is putting, this is a tremendous challenge before industry at the moment. And that's going to be um, reflected all the way down on the shop floor. Um, Indian industry is having to, to, to adopt uh, measures like total quality management, just-in-time systems, even try to bring about um, um, standards like ISO 9000, uh, which is an international standard. And so there's going to be a tremendous amount of, um, of upgradation of skills and attitudes needed to bring about this change. There, there will be um, a tremendous amount of automation that's going to be necessary. And uh, the emphasis is going to shift from inspecting quality to process control. While the technician education system has been trying to meet the present demands of technical manpower, it has not been possible to fully meet the needs, quantitatively and qualitatively, due to constraints of resources. Major constraints in imparting quality training to the diploma holders in polytechnics are shortage of staff, equipment, and inadequate availability of the funds. Even the instruction material available to the students is not proper. Uh, about 30 percent posts are lying vacant in this polytechnic as well as in many other polytechnics. Well, so far as this uh, bigger cities like Bhopal is concerned, we are in a position to manage the lecturers or you may call professors on the part-time basis. But in smaller cities, that is, uh, that is not feasible even. India has a three-tier technical education system in which technician education is a key component. Technician education is a judicious mix of knowledge and skills. The dividing line is variable depending upon the needs of the engineering disciplines. Technician education infrastructure has shown unprecedented expansion during the last four decades. As against 53 polytechnics in 1947, the country has about 746 polytechnics now. Despite many achievements, there are areas of concern, particularly in the quality of the output from the system. What are the aspirations of the students in polytechnics? 
I didn't want to do mere BA or BSc because it doesn't have any future scope. And uh, secondly, I'd given pre-entrance test for engineering. I couldn't clear it. So I thought, why not to the, do this uh, electronics course? May I have a final year electrical engineering? Manish Gupta hopes to set up a small-scale industry of his own after completing the diploma course. Sushma Rani has joined the diploma course in secretarial practice because job opportunities are many in government and private sectors. Ravi Shukla wants to do something new in electrical engineering. These young boys and girls have great expectations and can contribute significantly to the economic development of the country given appropriate training relevant to the technology needs. The system has to update its infrastructure, courses and training to meet this demand. As we stand on the threshold of the 21st century, the concern of the planners is not only to meet the challenges of the present, but to gear up the system to meet future challenges. The future technological scenario will be quite different with a high level of technology upgradation in every aspect of human life. It is in this context that the Government of India initiated a national debate on challenges of education, leading to the adoption of the National Policy on Education in 1986. A program of action was prepared for strengthening technician education with the help of technical teachers training institutes. While some programs of the program of action were implemented during the next four years, many crucial areas had to be held in abeyance due to paucity of funds. The blueprint already available for development of technician education needed urgent attention. It was then that the Government of India negotiated with the World Bank for assistance in implementing the developmental projects. In the formulation of the scheme and the follow-up action plan, the Ministry of Human Resource Development, the Directorates of Technical Education of the States and the TTTIs worked closely together and had the involvement of the personnel in the states and in the polytechnics who ultimately will be implementing the scheme. The different states involved in the project prepared exhaustive plans after careful consideration of their needs. We have prepared polytechnic-wise detailed project report and worked out the requirements of the institutions, buildings, residential, hostel, functional equipment, furniture, library, staff, while working out the requirements of the polytechnics, we have involved the people at the grassroots level and worked out the actual needs of the institutions. The detailed project proposals from the states were discussed at many levels within the country and with the World Bank and refined based upon prioritized needs. After sustained negotiations, the World Bank accepted the proposals and agreed to provide assistance in terms of soft loans and credit. In keeping with the holistic approach to development, the schemes under the project were classified into three major subheads. Capacity expansion, quality improvement and efficiency improvement. The major objectives of capacity expansion is to expand and diversify programs, introduce flexibility in courses, and to increase the reach of the system to women and the handicapped.
This will be achieved through nine different schemes under capacity expansion. Now in the World Bank project, the introduction, the Unnapol, there are schemes to help for introduction of new courses and also to, to improve the existing courses so that the capacity utilization and also uh, the state can develop properly. The new industrial policy of the government promises to usher in a new technology scene in the country. Industry Institute interaction has been talked about a lot, but the new policy makes it all the more imperative for the industry and the technician institutions to come closer. We have to join hands, not only in the design, but also in implementation of these programs. The industry will be willing to play a key role in the development of technical skills in the country. It would indeed have to participate in the management of technician institutions. This has now become inescapable. For the impetus provided by the new policy is to make Indian industry competitive in the world markets. Human resource development is an inseparable part of this strategy. We are trying to uh bring in the flexibility in the form of credit system so that the students are able to uh, they are able to progress they are, they are able to plan their studies in a flexible manner suiting to their capacity to meet the challenges of the 21st century diploma courses in many frontier areas of technology will be introduced as in chemical engineering electronics, energy engineering, computers, health and nutrition, environmental science, mechanical engineering, and space technology. There are also courses envisaged in many other engineering and non-engineering areas. Women are taking to technician education in a big way, despite many problems like limited number of institutions and hostel facilities. I prefer this marketing and sales management course because I think girls can give better results than boys and it's quite challenging field for girls. I wanted to do electronics only because it, it is said to be the age of electronics. Opportunities are very high. Nowadays more importance is given to uh, vocational courses. Then media itself is communication. So basically I'm interested in communication. That's why I've joined it. And after finishing it, I would like to do news coverage and comparing. Manju wants to be self-dependent by opening a medical laboratory of her own. Otherwise, she hopes to easily get a job. The handicapped have very few opportunities for technical training today. Special emphasis will be given to provide technical training to the handicapped. Quality improvement is the next major subhead of the project. Professor Subbarao explains the major objectives of this component of the project. 
Firstly, the curriculum design and development methodologies will further be refined and used for updating the curricula of the ongoing programs more frequently and also for preparing need-based curricula for the new courses to be introduced. Secondly, the equipment in the laboratories and the workshops and also the infrastructural facilities in the institutions will be modernized to provide a support base for effective implementation of the curricula of courses. Thirdly, a wide range of instructional resource materials will be developed and extensively used for promoting student-centered learning. This World Bank uh, project implementation will definitely improve the quality improvement of the teachers. Um, as much as the teachers should be in a position uh, to take uh, implant training, they can undergo some implant training which will enable their uh, quality development. I feel that the standard of our institution will be very much boosted up with the implementation of World Bank project. Now we propose to modernize the laboratories and have all the modern equipment so that we can give better training to the students and with these improved facilities the quality of training will improve and the teachers, faculty will be able to teach better, their quality will also improve and ultimately the quality of product will also improve and their employability will be better in the field. There are eight different schemes being implemented under quality improvement. Diploma education has played a very vital role in the industrialization of this country in the sense that it has provided first and second stage supervisors in the beginning which we have been able to develop into middle level management with the training experience and further inputs. Diploma holders that we now get need further training. For this the polytechnics have to change their syllabi, modernize their training facilities and Industry also has to play its role in the sense that industry has to come forward, help institutes to design courses specifically for these advanced technologies and systems and provide facilities for training these graduate uh, diploma holders so that they can play their proper role in the industry in the future. Academic autonomy is a must for any educational institution because academic means dissension, dissent and adding one's own views. Administrative autonomy, yes. If autonomy is given and more and more autonomy is given, I think the functioning becomes better and better. The third sub-component is efficiency improvement, which basically aims to strengthen the management system. There are four schemes under this subcomponent. The objectives of the first two components, capacity expansion and quality improvement, could be effectively achieved only if the internal and external efficiency of the management system could be tuned for this particular purpose. Massive intervention in terms of the management of change, in terms of bringing about improvement in the quality, in improvement in the number of programs being offered, in the variety of programs being offered, in the protection of learning resources, all this requires heavy inputs, streamlining of procedures, streamlining of the management system and the development of expertise and this component aims to uh, initiate and to implement efforts in these directions. Special emphasis is being given under this subcomponent to set up efficient maintenance systems at different levels for different resources.
Implemented over a period of eight years in two phases, the project covers polytechnics almost all over the country. The total financial outlay for the project is about rupees 1660 crores, out of which the World Bank will reimburse expenditure to the extent of 552.81 million US dollars. Out of the total outlay, about 70% is for infrastructure development, 2.75% for operation and maintenance, 1.75% for library, 3.5% for staff development, and the remaining 22% for salaries and consumables. To ensure that this massive developmental effort to improve technician education is managed with accurate perceptions of objectives and strategies, an elaborate management system with built-in interlinkages has been set up. The NPIU is a separate autonomous body set up by the Government of India under the umbrella of Educational Consultants India Limited for the purpose of providing assistance, facilitating and monitoring the various project activities at the national level. The NPIU is headed by a central project advisor who is assisted by two central project coordinators one for academic activities and the other for resources. The NPIU receives its policy directives from a steering committee and it also gets expert advice from an advisory committee. In its day-to-day -day operations, the NPIU requires to establish linkages with various central and state level organizations for implementing the World Bank project activities. These will include the DGSND for equipment procurement, the NTMIS for manpower information, the AACTE for giving recognition to polytechnics and their academic courses, the directors of technical education and the state level project implementation units, and last but not the least, the TTTIs for providing academic and research support. What do we hope to achieve qualitatively at the end of the project? Definitely we'll have a better output. The students who will be coming out, they will be much better, acceptable to the industry. Similarly, our teachers will be well trained. I'm a teacher of medical laboratory technology. I would like to take this opportunity to equip our labs and the classroom for effective teaching learning and for collaborative work with the hospitals. Improvement in capacity and equity of the polytechnic education in the country would mean that the polytechnics will be able to supply the trained manpower required by the industry in respect of technicians and technician engineers in number, in quality, as well as to suit the new and emerging technology areas in the industry. It will also provide opportunity for the certain sections of society like women, handicapped people, as well as the people living in the remote areas of the country. The meaning of the quality improvement is training of more number of teachers, as well as improving the industry interaction, as improvement of the curriculum, improvement of instruction materials, and so on. The, the third and the last aspect of improvement is the efficiency of the polytechnic education in respect of cutting the cost of producing a te technician from the polytechnics as also improving the services offered by the polytechnics. Nature has been bountiful and benevolent in giving us a beautiful environment. Developmental activities have tended to deteriorate this gift. The project lays special emphasis in creating awareness of global concerns about environment amongst technicians so that developmental activities do not adversely affect this gift of nature.
During the last 40 years, the technicians trained by our polytechnics have performed their functions well in making the country self-reliant in many fields and to be amongst the leaders in a few areas. However, the technology is changing very fast today and we are living in a highly competitive world. The present level and quality of technicians being trained cannot meet the challenges posed. The entire system of polytechnics need to be transformed and expanded. Curricula have to be changed. Courses in many emerging technologies are to be introduced. Good teachers have to be employed, trained and retained. Polytechnics have to be brought much closer to the industry and the community. Opportunities for women have to be increased and promoted. Existing technicians have to be retrained. They have also to become aware of major concerns of the environment. Attention has to be paid to create opportunities for the handicapped. Keeping these in view, a massive project covering almost all recognized polytechnics in the country has been launched. The World Bank is assisting us in this project, which is estimated to cost more than 1600 crore rupees in the next seven to eight years. The object is to improve the system as a whole in quantity and quality to meet the immediate challenges and challenges of the 21st century. It is important for national progress that the project succeeds. For this, we need the assistance and involvement of not only the polytechnics involved, but also of higher institutions, professional bodies, industries, service sector, and the community as a whole. I am sure that our young technicians can meet any challenges that are posed to them. The polytechnics have thus a unique opportunity to develop and reach new horizons in technician education. <laughs>